My son's name is Bobby Walker. Uh, Bobby was uh, got a degree in psychology. Um, during the time he was in college, I noticed that things would kind of get a little out of hand. He would get a little angry now and then, get a little caught up in something that really wasn't real, um, something that would bother him that would be way blown out of proportion. He knew that he had a problem, but he didn't really feel like it was big enough to stop him. He felt like he could get by it. He just had to be a little bit stronger. Um, he had to be a little bit more organized and put him in, allow him only to be in situations that felt safe and okay for him. So I came home one morning, it was a Saturday, and I had been out running errands and Bobby had been um, teaching tennis lessons. He'd been instructing tennis. Uh, he was an avid tennis player and he would give tennis lessons to people that couldn't afford tennis lessons and charge them five, ten dollars just because he didn't really care about the money. So he was in good spirits, you know, he came home we went uh, together to get some frozen yogurt together. We were living in Washington, D.C., so we walked around the block to get some frozen yogurt. We walked back to the apartment. Um, we had a discussion over something that was happening, and honestly, I wasn't really happy about what happened. He got into the shower. I was in the kitchen. The next thing I know, he comes running out of the shower, and he's naked. And that's something he was very, very modest, very, very, would never, ever, ever do anything like that. And he just looked at me and he said, you know, I came into this world like this and I'm going to leave the world like this. And he went out onto the balcony of our 14th floor apartment and he jumped. I tried screaming, screaming, no, Bobby, no, no, please don't do that, don't do that. I couldn't stop him. So I went running down, screaming, call the ambulance, call 911, 911. But when I got there, it was too late, and I watched him take his last breath. Everything was a blur. All these people came from, I don't know, I don't know, I heard the ambulance, I heard all these people come. A couple of people came and pulled me away. And one lady, specifically, that I remember, she was very strong because I was falling down and you know, hysterical. And she just said, you know, she kept telling me, you know, God is with you. God is with you. You know, your son is okay. He's in good hands. God is with you. I kept trying to go back over to see him. I kept, I tried to call the pastor of my church. I tried to get, I kept telling the the police and all the people that I needed to go pray over my son, that I needed to be there. And of course, I wasn't in any condition and they were trying to work on him. They didn't know what was happening. But there were many, many people there and they just came and surrounded me. And they told me that they were praying and the police officer later that was over there with my son came over and he said, I know that they wouldn't let you go pray over your son, but I want to tell you that while I was there, I did pray over your son for you. I felt I didn't know what to do. I just, everything was like such a blur and in my mind, the only thing that I knew do, to do was run to God. And not in my physical body, but in everything else, I just ran as fast as I could to God. It was a, the most tragic thing that ever happened, but I felt God pull me just like this, and put his arms around me, just like that. And I knew he had me. I knew he had me. I knew I was someplace I'd never been before. And it was inconceivable how I felt. But the one thing that I knew is that God had me there. And I know God's got a plan, and we don't always understand it. We don't know why we go through what we go through. But about eight months ago, maybe less than that, I realized that I needed to do something to help other parents 
One, to be able to recognize if there's something wrong. I needed to be able to help have a path so that someone that is dealing with depression or mental illness so that they didn't have to feel all alone. They didn't have to feel like they had to be all strong, that it could be okay to ask for help. Today, in this world, we get so preoccupied with our, with our cell phones. We text, we email. Uh, many of us don't even have dinner together as a family anymore. We don't sit at the table and talk and know what's going on in our lives. Families need to know each other. They need to see when one, one person is a little sad, when one person is a little overwhelmed, you know, we need to pay attention. We need to know, how can I help? This is my family. You know, none of us are stronger than the weakest link. This is my family member here. I need to see what we can do. Losing a child is one of the most tragic events that anyone could have experienced. The best I could say for someone that is experiencing this is to run to God. Run to God. He will get you through.